me. Like I have three screens going right now. Um, so that you could be clicking on things as I talk about them. But but it's not necessary because we're also going to give us give you some time to discuss and you'll be able to be clicking and spend some time on this um, in the next hour. It is also going to be, and I'm going to go back now to the OER Commons. This is the focus of our fifth class, OER curation, of course, but mostly creation. We're at the point now where you are going to add your original content to OER Commons. And again, as I said when we first started today, um, it's not that we're that I personally am totally in love with OER Commons and not with some of the other OER resources out there. But we are connected through the grant and through ISME to OER Commons. And my hope is that as this fantastic group of librarians that we all are, we can add some more fantastic content to OER Commons because in the last couple years, we know there have been frustrations and I have them too that you look up something in OER Commons and it's not what you wanted, it's not what you had in mind. And OER, I think up front, we just have to say, yeah, it does take time, it does. But one of the questions that I want, if you're in here, you'll see that they have done some um, updates to OER Commons and I feel like it's getting much less complicated, which is a good thing. You all are members and we all have our group. And then um, can we just maybe in the chat or just unmute yourself, what are you looking for when you search for OER? Um, often for myself, I'm looking for an idea or I'm looking for a resource. I'm not always looking for a complete lesson plan because I don't know about you, but when I find a lesson plan, I usually pick two or three things out of it and then kind of create my own from it. Not that I would go remix every time, but just on my own privately. I think sometimes one of the things that I don't do enough is share back some of the what I use. So are you looking for lesson plans? Are you looking for resources? Are you looking for something you can give directly to your students without changing it, without remixing it? What are um, some of your ideas or comments? Just go ahead and unmute yourself. Or again, we're checking chat. So Nola says ideas and lessons. Um, Angie says lesson plan ideas. What kind of what kind of topics are you looking for? I guess too. Um, what topics would you go in are you looking for? Ready to use lesson plans in curated resources. And things that you want to hand right to your teacher and say, here, it's ready to go. Media lessons, media literacy. Right. So there are two kinds of things that are put in, and they've made it much more clear. Two kinds of things that are put in here. You can add a resource. And of course, something that's already a complete package and that's not able to be remixed through the OER Commons platform. Or you add your um, lesson plan and it can be remixed. One of the things that I don't see a lot of is things like choice boards or um, hyperdocs or some of the things that we've been talking about lately. I see a lot of traditional lesson plans, or I see like a lot of things from like Engage New York, which are fantastic, but it's a set lesson plan. Um, or it might not be for the grade level you're looking for. Yep. Some of you finding that frustrating? I see Dewey Decimal, copyright. And one of the things I would encourage you to when you do find things is that you can update tags because I think um, the, in some of our OER Commons frustrations are the tags, the search terms that are used. And Suzanne said she spent a lot of time looking for poetry. Now, did you find that within OER Commons or did you find that in other OER resources? And now in our last class, we had um, a great list of resources from Julie and then also a great um, 
Oh, pearl trees, a pearl trees collection. Looks common sense. Okay, so basically, for the, I'm gonna uh, demonstrate because it is quite new, and then also because we want you to be thinking of what would you add to OER Commons to make it more useful, not only for you and your staff, but for other librarians. And we know it depends on grade level. Oh, it seems like the movers and shakers on, oh. Michelle, I think that's a good point that, that a, a lot of the things that I find and I use, I have to say, are on Twitter. Yeah, for media and blogs. But Joyce Valenza is the one who put out the pearl trees. That She is very good at collecting things and sharing them that way. All right, so here we are. I'm logged into my OER Commons. And so I um, simply have to go to Add OER. And what comes up is Open Author or Submit from the Web. Open Author is where you create a learning module, a lesson, a unit, an activity. Submit from the web is where you're simply get, um, linking to resources. And one, what we're going to um, ask you to do is open author for the OER course. And of course, we're not going to take the time today to do it all. We just want to show you it's so much um, clearer than it used to be. Now, of course, ahead of time, I started my open author file. So I'm going to go over here to my profile picture. And of course, I have my own stuff in the way. And I have my groups, my hubs, where I'm going to find things. What I have started and saved as a draft is in my items. So here we are. I'm going to create a superhero. Now, quite a while ago, I have to say it was back in 2008, I actually did a unit on superheroes and I had my high school juniors and seniors create their own superheroes, but we did it with research and we included a lot of art, um, digital and paper pencil. And at that time also, AASL standards were new and they were starting a database of lesson plans. And then along came Common Core. So there were this great database, which sorry to say is no longer in existence because the AASL lesson um, standards, of course, are new. But there was this book. I don't know if you can see it. It's called Inquiry in the Common Core. And the editors of this book just went out and asked people, could you give us exemplars? Or they looked through that old database and said, would you like to put your lesson as an exemplar in our book? So you don't have to, what I, my whole point here is you don't have to go create something brand new. What's something you've used before, you've adapted yourself, something that maybe you find very successful and you've just never shared with anyone or maybe you have not shared it in this way. So I have taught uh, lessons around superheroes for a, quite a while, but for different grade levels and I've done it different ways. So when I went to put it into this OER Commons, I thought, well, I should make a choice board or I should make a hyperdoc. And I got started looking at how they had changed this, okay? And of course, because I'm adding the lesson in, it will be remixable. Um, one of the things I have to say, and I have asked the OER Commons people, they have um, the Common Core standards in there, but they don't have the new AASL ones in there quite yet. And a new thing they have added is you can have a co-author. So it was very easy, let me go back into the edit mode here, for me to add Julie as my co-author. We'd like you to think of somebody maybe in the cohort or um, in your building that might co-author with you or something you've done in the past. Again, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, so I went out and I found in the free clip art my, my image. And of course, I didn't finish this yet. And I like to use the um, inquiry model of, of it's called, it's the Barbara Stripling, Stripling inquiry model, but I have adapted it a little bit. So the sections of the inquiry model, 
I have made the sections of my lesson plan very easy. Wonder, investigate and plan, create, share, and then my fifth one, reflect. So if I click into my first one, you can see it is what you see is what you get. You put your section name in. Of course, you have to keep remembering to save. But what I like about this is there's a student view, which can be uploaded directly to Google Classroom. And then there's also the instructor view. So you can put comments in that your stu the students don't see. So there's the main comment for my um, part one. It's really, I think it's a five part lesson plan. And then you add your resources, very easy to upload. And then your instructor notes are right there. You don't have to go to a new page. And of course, with the new Bitmoji craze, I have a Bitmoji superhero that I've added in. And this is just an outline. I haven't quite, I haven't finished this yet. But again, it's what you type and what you see is what you get. It was so easy right here to add that um, Bitmoji image in. You can format, you can bold. And here's another new feature. Right here, you click on this and it, the platform checks your accessibility. So let's do that. Already it says, the document doesn't contain any accessibility issues. This is fantastic. They didn't have that before. I can preview. Let's look at what the students would see. This is just for the part one, create a superhero, the wonder. There it is, it tells them what to do. It's gonna be a small group discussion. There um, is my resource I want them to use. It's, it is a hot link. And I can X out of that preview and go look at what does the instructor see. Now it looks complicated, but it really isn't because you put it all on the same page. And if you already have your lesson written up, you can simply copy and paste it in. I keep, every time I teach this lesson, I teach it differently. And so when I'm putting it in here, I'm, I'm not doing it the same way either. I'm changing a lot of things. So down here, if it's in blue, that's what your students are going to see. I don't know if you guys can see it that well on my screen. Okay, the wonder part, that's the teacher part. And then I can just um, get out of that and go back to my edit screen by clicking out of these. Um, please stop me, or, and Julie, I don't know if you have uh, anything in chat, but here's where I added Julie. You just view and manage your authors right here. And she received an email that said, Hey, Joan added you as an author to her OER lesson. I also OER. received a text, but that was directly from Joan. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. The, the program, the platform didn't generate the text I did because I'm like, Julie, did you get an email? I was just <laughs> to see how it would come out. So every time you add, of course, you have to remember to save, but you can have this in here as a draft. You do not have to do it all in one one setting you don't have to also you don't have to do it in different sections it could all be one section one of the things that i looked at if i go back to my items and i think it was connie in our last class found this hyperdoc so if i look into it here's i like the way this person put this one in because they had their hyperdoc all re, um, created, right? And you see where it just says view resource? Okay, what they did is their whole hyperdoc is right here. And they just copied and pasted it into, that's it. That's their lesson plan, their hyperdoc, it's in. One page. Of course, I started making mine a little more complicated because it, um, I'm always changing things, I guess. It's like, oh, this would be better, or here's a new idea. So that's one way. And here is the great feature where you could put that right into a Google Classroom, or you can download it. But then let me show you a couple other ideas. If I go back to my items. I've used Anne Frank as an example before. Technically, even though this person didn't call this uh, HyperDoc, that's what it is. 
Okay. When you, of course, there's your landing page, but when you view the resource, basically they did everything for this lesson plan as a Google Docs. Okay, and you can down, view it or download it. But then when you look at student view, there, um, oh, preview, sorry. Again, this is what, they're using the steps of a hyperdoc with engage, explore, but this was all in their um, Google Doc. They just laid it out using the open art author um, lesson plan creator. So that's pretty cool. There are a lot of good examples to look at, but I also think um, I'm trying to keep in mind, what do I like when I find one that I like at all, or I like part of it, or I'd like to remix it so I could use it and put it in Google Classroom for me or, or you know, for one of my colleagues. So let's go back. And one that was a little more traditional, nothing wrong with traditional, is an Anne Frank one that I had found. And of course, if you look at material type, it might say lesson plan, but they're not all the same. Okay, so here's another one. More traditional, and I have to say, I did use um, bits and pieces of this. The documents of the drama matching is excellent. And then they've linked to so many resources. Your lesson plan that you're going to put in as part of our class, we want it to be something useful, something timely, something that um, you and a colleague have come up with from your school, something you and maybe one of your cohort colleagues come up with, and I know many of you have wanted um, specific library lessons and I feel frustrated with that. Well, I feel like my superhero one is a specific library lesson, but I didn't tag it library. Part of it is they have to research a global issue. And to me, that's the library part. Research the global issue and create a superhero who can solve that problem. So there's a lot of creativity in there. There's research, there's history, it's language arts. It's art um, because in the past when I've done it, I allowed my students to draw um, with digital tools or they've used the clip art, the reusable clip art because some aren't comfortable drawing or some have just drawn on paper and then of course we scanned it in. And I'm looking at time. Oh good, we're great on time. So basically what we did too on the agenda was to link back to the choice wakelet that I believe we looked at during our um, time together during Thai back in April. Um, Joan, we have a quick question here. Um, Michelle, <clears throat> Michelle has, um, she says she's a Microsoft district, district, not a Google. And if she posted an OER Commons lesson in Canvas, for their LMS. Um, do students have any login issues? No, I don't believe so. If um, it depends in student view, if you give the link right to OER Commons and not, no, it should, you should not have to log in. So my question was, you know, I have a profile in OER Commons. Right. Um, to actually put the lesson in, but when I, link it in canvas it'll just shoot students right in they don't have to log in or there's no issue there i believe because don't they log in to canvas right they have a login right yeah okay as far as i know it's supposed to work that way okay thank you and then i i i'm sorry i'm kind of jumping all over the place but um of course, it stays as draft, and you're the only one or your co-author who sees that until you actually um, finish and publish. 
And I know I'm, I use Google Classroom, but many of these things work, although they don't, it's not as easy. It's a lot of copy and pasting or giving them the link and they work in other um, platforms also. To me, it's just so much simpler than even two years ago when we started looking at this OER Commons and the editing and remixing is much a much simpler process. So we have lots of examples to look at. If we go to our group, you have put in tons of examples of things that you've used or you've shared from the first class the OER uh, remix class, or the one we just finished, the OER in depth, where you use the ISCI, ISCI framework. So what we're gonna be asking in this course four is that you add your own lesson. Not add the resource, actually do the open author. And of course, there'll be a lot more directions and the class um, will be on our site as always. But I wanted to give you a live look at this. So your job today is to start thinking about what have I done in the past or what lesson have I done with another teacher or what lesson do I wish I could find in here that I could create and add to this resource or um, something that I could tweak one way or the other questions about that i mean it could be any topic um i think i'm quoting shannon miller when i say that that every content area and every subject is library because there's an element if we're truly integrating and we're and it's not just supporting there's an element of everything that we do in school that includes library it includes research, it includes thinking skills, it includes the digital literacy, all of those things that we've talked about throughout our class. Um, you can unmute and talk to me. <laughs> Do I have more things in the... No, <laughs> they're really quiet. <laughs> I, I don't want to. Sh I wanted to talk about this a lot today, to not to shock you, because I have to say, when I looked at OE Co OER Commons, and they're like, "Oh, here, just use Open Author and put your own stuff in," I'm like, "What?" It it it's a bit overwhelming and it's a bit intimidating, but I really, really feel that they have um, updated this platform to make it so much easier and so much more inviting. And that as librarians, we have some good stuff that's not in here that I think would be not only helpful to other librarians, but to all educators. And I know that um, there's a hub in here. North Dakota and Wyoming both have hubs. South Dakota's not quite there yet, or, or um, actually, I'm not too sure about South Dakota's plans. But this is something also that you can talk about when you meet with your state library people from each state. And that's going to be tomorrow. There'll be discussion time with Carmen and Alyssa and Paige. OK, so we have about a half hour. And we gave you the link right there to the Choice Wakelet. And, oh, I wanted to also let you know, like, this is one of my personal goals to get more involved with HyperDocs, is that there's a Facebook group for HyperDocs, and they are fantastic. They share everything, and they are very, very active. Um, you can just search for them, and then, of course, it's a closed group, so you do have to ask for permission. Um, but it only took, like, a day and I received the message back that I was a member of that group. And not that choice boards or hyperdocs are the only type of thing to put in here, but I'm just thinking about um, things that we've been talking about recently in class and we've seen a lot of throughout the literature and yes, in the blogs and in Twitter and on other Facebook pages. What was the name of the group again? It's uh, hyperdocs. Oh, let me go just show you where. Um, 
You know, I don't even use Facebook on my laptop. Isn't that terrible? There it was, sorry. So it's, a, okay. Because I just joined the Bitmoji moji craze. Oh yeah, the Bitmoji has, we're going to talk about that <laughs> later. Which is a craze. <laughs> <laughs> have you made stuff yet, Shelly? <laughs> I have. Actually, I'm probably going to get in trouble with a second grade teacher at Meadowbrook. I think I have gotten her overly addicted. <laughs> well, that's cool. Okay. So I'm going to <laughs> that's how we roll. That's cool. <laughs> okay. So here it is. It's the HyperDocs. Oh, wait a minute. Does this say it's the public group? Anyone can find the group, yeah. But then you have to um, request permission to be in it. And one of the first thing they asked is, did you read our book? Because it's the two authors of the book, the HyperDoc book, which I'm gonna talk about tomorrow, um, who run the Facebook group. Yeah, here's the Bitmoji one that she was just asking about. So um, this is just a recent one. Somebody's asking if they had, someone had already made a hyperdoc, and people are they just share everything and say, you know, feel feel free to re, um, edit, revise, whatever. Okay, so back to OER. What we'd like you to do then is just to. Julie's going to put you into rooms, but she's going to have you change something first and just discuss what, what do you want to find in OER, specifically OER Commons? What could you put in there that's not there already? And I have to say, what I did before I started making my superhero lesson plan is I searched for superheroes. And I didn't find anything similar to what, um, you know, use a global issue, create a su superhero to solve it. I didn't find anything similar. So the first step, of course, brainstorm your ideas and then see if there's something in there already. Or if it's in there, could you create something that would be a little more appealing? So can we find your create a superhero? I don't believe you can find it because it's still in draft mode. Okay, I right. love that idea. Um, but these other ones definitely the Google Classroom HyperDoc, I think, was just an excellent example. And then, um, of course, I was teaching Anne Frank, so I was kind of stuck on Anne Frank. That, um, some of these other examples. But you will, you will be doing a lesson plan. And, of course, I keep talking about HyperDocs and choice boards because it's all about voice and choice. And I'm also thinking about what would I put up there if we're still doing this remote learning? Um, I have to say my current district hasn't made any decisions, but there's been a lot of discussion that 712 wouldn't come back to this, the physical building in the fall, only K through six. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on in your districts or your schools, but I was trying to think of blended learning. This was this is a lesson that I have done face to face, but what would it look like if it was all digital? So that's why I'm changing it and I'm not done writing it yet. Other questions? Okay. Julie, I think we better get to Can we room. share? Okay. I mean, I'm going to share then, or, or go back to the agenda. You can go back to the agenda, and then I can talk talk to them all. Um, okay. So we've got our goals. So what I'm going to do is I want to put you guys in special rooms. Um, <laughs> Not really, but I want to try to group you by like age group a little bit. So if you want to scroll down um, under the the goals there, Joan, I've dropped in how to rename yourself. And so if do you, you want me to open the goal the goal no, file, no, oh. scroll just scroll down right there. There's a picture. Sorry. That's okay. Sorry. There it is. Um, and so all you need to do is um, mouse over your picture. And once you've moused over your picture, oh, Jenny, <laughs> you did it. Um, mouse over your picture and you will be able to rename yourself. That will you click on the three dots. Um, we want your first name, your, and, and if you have multiple, if there's numerous of you with, with the same name, I guess, put your last initial too. Yeah. Um, and then, um, your grade level, 
And so, and then your state. And then that'll help us as we're putting you in breakout rooms. And so for this discussion, I am going to dump you in um, with grade level, um, you know, and so it's, it's looking at your goals sheet and thinking about, you know, kind of what you want to do. And it gives you an opportunity to talk to each other as you're doing that. Um, so and feel free to talk about those frustrations. Talk about what you want to find. So what could you put in that would, um, you know, help this collection? So Megan, when you click on the, when you're on the phone or an iPad, if you um, click on the screen, you get, I believe it's an options that comes up and then you have the, the option to rename yourself. Or if you tell me what you want, I can just do it. I can rename you too, because I have that power. I can rename you all. <laughs> and when you all go to the goal sheet, if you haven't, of course, you'll find it's very similar to what we did last year. You'll find um, your name, open your own sheet. And these aren't written in stone. These are just your brainstorming, um, brainstorming time to start thinking about what you're going to do or who you and who you might want to do it with or if it's going to be something you do by yourself. That's that's OK, too. Okay, Julie, would you like me to stop sharing? No, you can keep sharing um, and do answer. So I'm going to quick try to move people a little bit here. Okay, so I. Um... I should have had you guys do this. That's before. okay, because we're going to give them some time at the end of the day and they can come back and revisit this too today and tomorrow. Megan, you did it, yay. We just want you on the road to thinking about what would be like the most fantastic OER lesson ever. Oh, and I'll just have to tell you, my kids have come up with some great superheroes because I asked them to think about themselves, their family, their community. One came up with um, Super Kamad Bad, and that superhero, <laughs> because you know, we live on the res, and tongue in cheek, that superhero, if you were eating too much Kamad cheese or other Kamads that weren't necessarily healthy for you, and they studied the issue of childhood obesity. That was their serious issue behind it. Um, Super Kamad Bad would drop a magical ketchup on you to help with those calories. I mean, they had some fantastic, crazy ideas. Oh, yeah, we, we had to outlaw certain um, weapons. I have to give you that hint. <laughs> they, they couldn't do those. <laughs> I am I'm feeling you guys are just you got so many cool things. Um I don't know, I think I just did something to somebody's room. I don't know what I did, you guys. All right. Um so what we're gonna do is I am kind of moving people a little bit um, so that you are in with your, with a grade level um, that's, that's sort of appropriate for you. We have a lot of K-12, which is awesome. Um, and so I'm putting K-12s together as much as possible, um, just so that you have that opportunity to, to chat with each other. Um, So give me one more second and then I will have you all moved where I think makes sense. All right, so everybody should have their um, 
Everybody should have their goal sheet. Um, and really what we're looking at here is, you know, an opportunity to chat with each other and, and have that um, opportunity to um, just share ideas and resources and stuff like that as you, as you go. Um, and, and, you know, kind of brainstorm um, as you're thinking about what do you want to do for, for a goal, just to give you that opportunity to have a chance to talk. Um, dear Becky, I've left you in a room all by yourself. Let me move you. Again, think about lessons that you've used before. Like I said, mine was face to face, but it can easily be, easily be turned into a, um, a virtual lesson or it could be some of each parts of each 